Welcome to Olix2. In this video, I would like to say a few words about files and ins files, res files, listing files, uh, and how they're managed in Olix2. Now, this is a sample that we ship. It's the THPP sample in start and there. So if you want to follow this at home, uh, you can uh, load that sample up. Okay, in Olix2, you click work and refine, and it refines. As you can see from the output, you can type text to see the output better. In a, um, in a in a window, so you see this was a standard shellx refinement, and that's exactly what we did. We set the refinement to shellx l, so that's what we got. Now there was no ins file, there was no copy rest to ins, nothing happened. So all of these things are managed by Olex too, and the purpose of this video is for you to understand how it all works. So first of all, if you click on this folder symbol here then you see the current working folder where everything happens. So we've got the files relevant to the structure here and we've got a hidden folder .olex. So you might not see this if you uh, have hidden files uh, hidden in your, in your uh, computer system. So you can change that and make it visible. Now in this folder, there is first of all a folder called originals and that contains the very first file that Olix2 has ever seen about the structure. This is a bit of an insurance. If something goes majorly wrong, you can always go back to that. It also contains a temp directory and that temp directory, this is where the actual shellx L refinement happens. So what Olix2 does, it copies the necessary files from the top directory into the temp directory and then starts the shellx l refinement process in this directory. Now in shellx of course you need to have the ins file and the hkl file that must have the same name. Now in olix2 this is done for you by renaming files if that's necessary. So if you want to refine against a HKL file that, that is have a different name because you had a, a part way through processing or the first only the first run or the first two run or you tried something in the processing, you just have multiple HKL files in the top folder and I just simulate this by copying this, control copy, control V. And if I now click on um, the refinement settings, I can see that I can either refine against this HKL or that HKL. In this case, of course, they're identical, but you see where I'm going here. So you don't have to copy any files manually. In fact, it's fairly vital for running Olix2 successfully that you don't mess with this directory. So you don't copy, you don't rename, you don't do any of those things in this directory. You just let Olix2 manage it. And I know this is a big leap of faith for a lot of people. They're used to constantly renaming files and end up with like many, many copies of the same thing. So the rule as it was in Olix2 is that, um, well, this data set is called THPP and it's going to be called THPP all the way through. So this is one data collection that's got that name. And if you reprocess it or if you do different things, so it's still going to be called THPP. Uh, the name is what holds it all together, which enables Olix2 in the end to get you clean data and clean zip files out. Okay, so I said this all happens in the background and if I hit refine, it refines. But you may ask, where's my ins file? Well, if you're new to this field, you probably won't ask that question because why would you know about an ins file? And uh, really, um, there is no reason if you use Olix2 why you would need to know about an ins file because everything you might want to use an ins file for can be done through the GUI or through the command line in Olix2 uh, in, in, in a much more efficient and managed way. Now, of course, there is an ins file, except it doesn't actually exist. It is made every time when we fire an Olex, sorry, a Shellx refinement, we generate an ins file, and then uh, that's uh, fed into Shellx for the refinement. Because internally, Olex2 doesn't use the ins file, the ins file syntax or anything like this. We've got our own structure model and it knows everything about what needs to go in an ins file, but it knows a fair bit more than an ins file holds and that information will come in handy. What we do offer is these two options here. One of them is just a pen symbol up here. And if you click that, that is the beginning of an ins file. So this is the information to do with the cell, the unit cell and Z number of um, formula units in the unit cell and the error associated with that uh, cell above here. This is actually the wavelength here. So it's nothing to do, but it's got to do with the cell, of course, but this is not the dimension. This is A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma. 
and these are the um, errors associated with those values. Then we've got the symmetry codes um, and then the instructions for the refinement for the cycles of least squares, 20 peaks, uh, various things that, that come in here that you may or may not be familiar with, but really you don't need to know about. Then there is the second um, button here, which is the pen with a sort of atom underneath, and this is the list of atoms in your structure. And this is just like in a in an ins file, it's exactly the same, except we don't reference a number here, but it's actually the atom type symbol that we put in here, and then it's clear what it refers to rather than the position in some arbitrary list that is further up. One of the nice things with this is you can actually select just one atom and then click on that and you will see that nitrogen that I selected and all its dependencies. So free variable has to do with this here. And other than that, uh, this is what it is. And let's select one with the hydrogen on and it's exactly the same. So we see the atom we selected, but also the dependencies. And what happens here is that it's got a writing, it's got three writing hydrogens on it, and that's also shown in that window. So you can imagine if you've got a big structure, you can actually just uh, select the area you're interested in and then click on that and you get the file output. Generally, you don't ever need to do this because there's no reason to do this. The reason why I'm saying this is, let's look at the structure, Control q to hide those q-peaks again. There's actually a bit of disorder here, so let's just, um, for the moment, pretend we haven't noticed that disorder yet. Um, so we go kill $H, so that deletes all the hydrogens, and I'm going to delete that minor part if you hover the mouse, so this is 12% of that. If you do this, uh, Control r to refine this, and this refines reasonably well, so 7%. And what we find is there is actually a fairly uh, number of big Q-peaks here. Let's add hydrogens to this just to go back to some starting material, Control r And we see there is a fairly big peak. It's around about 1.1. It's not huge, but it's quite significant. Um, in, in, in this place here, the hydrogens have gone quite wrong here. Let's just delete them again. And I think that's because we left the part in here. So this is actually in part 0. So I type part 0 and I put this atom into part 0. And um, now we are at the structure as it might have appeared. And I think, in fact, this is how it was published. Now, if you wanted to model this disorder, the, we, we would have a number of different options. And one of them would be, of course, to name this a carbon. So we make this a carbon. We put this one into part one. And we say this is uh, FVAR21. And we put this one into part 2 and say f var minus 21 and you can see that the bonds aren't shown anymore now this bond is still shown so i delete all the hydrogens again kill dollar h and we refine this and um make it anisotropic and add the hydrogens to it h add this has become non-positive definite but at the moment this is only showing at seven percent of a carbon so it's it's really a very very small amount adding hydrogens to this typically fixes this so we go back up and this looks wonderful now all of this was done without looking at the files or editing the files or knowing anything about the files and i can go one step further and say well if something wasn't behaving here um, and i wanted to put a, a restraint in then uh, let's just make a completely artificial restraint and say we want those two distances to be the same all you would need to do in olix 2 is type sadi yeah it's a pair of atoms type sadi refine this and the restraint is in so you didn't even need to know what this atom is called because olix2 manages that for you so i can click on this as i said earlier and then on this and i can see there is a sadi on that um, it's f2 c2 f1 c1 and if i now rename this and i just name it no, no, f111 and refine it again and do exactly the same thing click on this again so now the Zadi has followed my renaming so there is really no need to you look at these files um, the only reason why you might want this file is if you want to get rid of a restraint we don't currently have a restraint management that's visible to you so you need to actually take this restraint out by doing just that so you click on the one you want to lose the restraint and delete it from that file representation. So that's really the only reason to use um, one of those files. Now in case you've been wondering what's going on here, 
Um, this looks a bit funny, this disorder, and uh, there are three hydrogens on there. Let's examine this in a little bit of detail. I click on this, so we've got part 0 and part 1. If I click on part 1, we see the major part. Now click on this again. So this is uh, ticked here, so that means it's going to be selected. See, these hydrogens are actually in part 1, because this is an sp3 carbon with those two hydrogens on, so that belongs to that part. And then we've got part 2. And that is actually an unsaturated carbon, this is CHCH, and that comes out at about, let's hover the mouse over this, at about 13%. And this was actually the starting material of this reaction, and part one was the product. So if you put it all together, you can see this is the minor product here shown, and the green one is the, um, the major part. So these hydrogens belong to different parts, and that's why it looks like there are three hydrogens on there. Again. There's no need to edit those files at all. If you really want the ins file, what you can do, you can type edit space ins. So this now will generate the ins file for you, um, as it would be generated for Shellex refinement. You might notice it says listening for this here, so now you can actually you know, edit live here, and you can say, okay, I'm gonna call this F102, and when you save that, um, save that, and this has automatically reloaded it, in F3, so there's now F102. So in a way, you can use Olix2, and if you wanted to edit a file, which we really strongly discourage you, but you can make modifications on this file. Every time you save it, Olix2 will update and show you what happens. Now, if you choose to edit the ins file like this, um, be aware we can't manage that. So if you make a mistake here, then it just goes wrong. We have to reload that file and it'll, it, it breaks the flow. I'm actually quite curious. So if, if you ever feel the need to actually edit a file like this, please let us know because I can't really think of a single case where this is needed other than getting rid of restraints. All Shalix commands are, are, are known to Olix2. Um, I don't know what I pressed here, it was meant to be F3 to get rid of those labels. Um, all all Shellex commands are known, including things like Resi and AFIX66 and you know all of those things that may be co complicated because they depend on the order of atoms in the list, so Olix2 manages all of those. Um, if you do have a case where, where, you, where you feel like you really need to edit the file, please write a comment, let me, let me know, and we will look into this and, and hopefully make it in such a way that um, you no longer will find it necessary to edit these files. Uh, just the last little thing, if, if you think that Olix2 messed up somewhere and your refinement doesn't work properly, um, one way to do and to check is you can click on this, um, click on the folder here and then you click onto the temp, uh, temp folder with shift um, and open uh, command window here. And if you now can type um, shell XL, it's assuming shell XL is on the path, and then THPP. Now if the refinement runs here, this is the pure shell X refinement in which Olix2 had absolutely nothing to do with it. So if, if you suspect Olix2 is getting something wrong, then please try this and uh, see what happens. So this is the shell X refinement without any interference of Olix2 at all. Okay, I hope this um, uh, clarified a few things about the files and how it works. And please leave some comments uh, at the bottom of this video. And if you have any queries, any questions, would like to know more, and I'd be happy to make more videos. Thank you for using Olix2.